Welcome, my name is Matthew Hansel. I'm undertaking a Doctorate of Philosophy in Engineering at the University of Technology, Sydney. And this paper is an examination of an approach to assist transit in maintaining political legitimacy by achieving reliability for the passengers and efficiency for the public. This paper examines the philosophical frameworks of public transport service delivery, specifically the strategic triangle and the service quality loop frameworks. Firstly, it examines the context of public sector organisations appropriating resources. And secondly, it examines how public transport service partners could provide services that passengers perceive to be high quality. It proposes an arbitrated service quality framework to synthesize a combined perspective between the SQL and the strategic triangle. It considers the need for efficiency and reliability from the passengers and public's perspective. It posits that statistical process control could support continuous improvement of the aforementioned reliability and efficiency to allow the service partners to deliver public transport sought by passengers as well as value for money sought by the public and their delegates in the parliament. The niche for case study research is when there's a how or why question that's being asked about a contemporary set of events over which the researcher has little or no control. For example, a transport system. Gamelgaard talks about this further in that the case study duality criterion uh, states that there's always a uniqueness to the case study. It, but a case study is always an empirical examination that's built on top of a theoretical examination, which is consistent with the postmodern reasoning model proposed by Gallinson, where theories, experiments and instruments are constantly being developed. In this case, a case study is an instrument that is used to expand upon a theory, to examine a theory, and to uh, provide advancements to that theory. This paper 22A forms a pair with my other paper at this conference 22B. This paper is a theoretical examination. It examines why transport operators must deliver an efficient and reliable public transport service to maintain their legitimacy and then how statistical process control could theoretically be used to assist in achieving that reliability and efficiency. 22B is then the uh, empirical examination of whether a naturally operated transport service delivers a um, operational running times that are normally distributed or can be estimated using a normal distribution in such a way that could be used by the uh, statistical process control. The next section of the slideshow discusses objectives and outcomes, i.e. what ought to be. Value for money is at its simplest, the optimal use of resources to achieve the intended outcomes. In the context of a public sector organization, this means that the public value that is created is the contribution which the in our case, transport industry, makes to the achievement of the community's objectives. So we are always focusing on achieving objectives. So economy is the ratio of the cost of procurement to the inputs and resources achieved. And that includes also the pollution um, caused as well as the regulations required in order to achieve those inputs. Efficiency is the amount of outputs produced with the given inputs by the activities of the organization. And effectiveness, which is the most important thing, is the extent to which outputs deliver the community's desired outcomes or objectives. Now, effectiveness is achieved by ensuring that money is spent on the right combination of outputs. And effectiveness is the use of the outputs by the customers to achieve their objectives. At the, its absolute simplest, the parliament doesn't authorize money to be spent just to provide buses running around the middle of nowhere. It authorizes the costs to procure buses in order to 
operate them so that the customers can use them to enhance society and the economy and also reduce our impacts on the environment. It is those objectives and those desired outcomes that drive the actual procurement of resources and it is those outcomes and those objectives that give legitimacy to the operations. Without the organization focusing on its effectiveness, it is essentially no longer producing value for money because it will not be producing the outcomes that the public uh, have desired and have asked for and have surrendered its resources to achieve. As an elegant example of customer objectives, consider the desires for useful transit identified by Walker in his 2012 book, Human Transit. Now, the ones focused on in this paper are trust and um, a good use of a passenger's time as well as a good use of the passenger's money and the public's money. That is, uh, reliability and efficiency are key objectives of the customer. These outcomes are then fed into the theoretical transport planning cycle in order to set the service targets, which uh, are then used to plan the outputs such as the routes, the stops, the connectivity and the timetables, including the headway and the speed. Um, then the public sector organisation will deliver the services and collect data to measure their performance. And that measures of performance are essential to determine whether they are delivering economically, efficiently and effectively. And two quick questions for that is, how is the transport network actually being delivered and how are passengers responding to the delivered transport network? The service quality loop is a key standard used by UTS to explain to laypersons the distinctions between the two viewpoints that their customers are seeking particular outcomes and the service providers are seeking to provide particular uh, outputs. But those are very different worlds in which they live. Uh, for example, the services what desired by the customers are expected to be trustworthy, but the uh, operators will consider that in terms of service reliability. In this way, the a customer's view is about effectiveness, while the service provider's view is about economy and efficiency. The customer considers outcomes and objectives and public value, and the provider considers the activities and the outputs. Using careful scientific observations, we can develop descriptive statements about what is and what was. These facts can be objectively tested for their truth. And these descriptive statements provide insight into purposeless hard systems. Now it is not logically possible to derive statements about what ought to be from these statements about what is. That was established by David Hume in 1739 and has not been disproven since. That is because to determine what ought to be, we must need use a values framework and a priority list in order to evaluate the possible outcomes. We can't determine if something is good or something is bad without a values list. That is why prescriptive statements are always subjective and are associated with purposeful and soft systems. Values pluralism is the acceptance of the truth that every person will have their own unique values framework and priority list and that in order to determine what the objectives are for an organization, we must arbitrate between those different values, frameworks and priorities in order to determine what is the public value that is acceptable to the community. Transport for New South Wales Future Transport Strategy 2056 outlined the values framework for the department and that included reliability and efficiency specifically addressed in principle four. The strategic triangle is a meta-level framework from Moore and the Kennedy School of Business. It is specifically created to address the issue of values pluralism through the concept of legitimacy. 
Moore describes how the community seeks infrastructure and services to reduce their personal impediments to improve their productivity and improve their quality of life. For example, the provision of a garbage service. The provision of a garbage service creates public value by removing uh, the th threat of disease. The framework describes how the communities have limited resources and competing values frameworks and priority lists. These require careful arbitration in order to determine what objectives will be pursued. To ensure the desired outcomes are achieved, the community will have to delegate to an authorised public sector organisation the legitimacy to raise taxes and restrict freedoms in order to provide those infrastructure and services. So because the PSO is appropriating resources and imposing restrictions, it must undertake a careful arbitration of process and operate economically efficiently and effectively in order to maintain the legitimacy of the community because it is appropriating resources and imposing restrictions. The more strategic triangle is a meta-level framework. It does not address service delivery or analytics such as performance measurement. Whereas the service quality loop is a macro level framework and does not address the issues about authority or the arbitration of objectives. So this paper proposes um, an initial arbitrated service quality loop. And it is a combination of the two frameworks where the outcomes sought by the beneficiaries and the required resources are arbitrated by a political system. And when a publicly supported and feasible set of outcomes and resource appropriations is arbitrated, that is then given to the operators as um, an authorization to set specific service targets. And the delivered operational performance has to be fed back into the political system so that the authorizers can understand what is feasible. As an example, we will address why reliability is so important to trust. As discussed above, passengers want to be able to trust their transit. One way to achieve trust is to manage and control risks, as shown in the Australian standard. Public transport passengers do not control the vehicles they use. Therefore, in order for the passengers to trust the transit service, the operator must control the risks for them. For example, the trains in New South Wales are not supposed to leave the station before they are timetabled to depart, even if they are running early. But with an unreliable and untrustworthy service, the passengers must themselves work to control the risks, which means they will have to examine all the possible consequences and the relevant likelihoods. They'll have to evaluate those risks against their personal criteria and come up with strategies to control the risks. For example, the passenger could shift to a mode that's more reliable, such as a car or a bicycle. They may waste a significant amount of time by leaving early and catching earlier services just so they are not late. Or they may waste a significant amount of energy by undertaking continuous planning and assessing various alternatives, checking the apps and monitoring the real-time data. System 2 cognition is quite expensive and humans prefer not to do it, but that is necessary in order to undertake a continuous planning loop between each stage of a transit journey, as shown in this diagram. However, if a transit service is reliable and trustworthy, the customer can operate on autopilot and habit and move from one service to the next without having to do continuous planning. This reduces their energy consumption and reduces the stress hormones released into their body. As such, a transport operator is really expected to use continuous improvement to ensure that their services are reliable uh, in order to ensure that they are effective, but also to ensure that they are being run efficiently and economically. UGS uses the Measure, Stabilize and Reduce framework developed by Dr. Zybots to explain uh, operational continuous improvement to students and transport managers. The idea being that if you identify the outliers and their causes, you can then eliminate them to stabilize the variation in service 
uh, dwell times and run times. And from there, you can then uh, improve the system by reducing those after you've stabilized them, thus leading to a better system overall. To maintain legitimacy through efficiency, the PSO will need to constantly measure how the services are being delivered, how the customers are responding to it, how reliably the services are being delivered, and if there is any waste that can be eliminated. So in theory, statistical process control could be used to improve transit's reliability and efficiency. But that only happens if a transit operates as a natural system, then the measurements of key parameters will form a normal distribution allowing the variance to be controlled. Now, Hounsville 22B uh, provides the empirical examination to test if three transit operations in Sydney have the characteristics that would support an SBC approach. In a normal distribution, the mean plus two standard deviation estimates the 97th percentile. And my second paper demonstrates that this uh, formula is a valid estimator for transit systems in Sydney. Thus, in order to deliver the desired customer outcome of efficiency and reliability, the service operators can use these equations um, and the standard deviation to uh, measure the operations of the system so that you can identify the problems within the system and eliminate them uh, as stabilized as the runtimes. As a simple example of this, if a service had a mean runtime of 36 minutes but a standard deviation of 4 minutes, then 97% of the services would arrive uh, within 44 minutes. But if the standard deviation was only 1 minute, then 97% of the services would arrive within 38 minutes. That substantial reduction in times would allow more services to be run. So in conclusion, we could theoretically use statistical process control to improve the efficiency and reliability of a transit service and thus ensure that it remains a legitimate uh, operation in main appropriating resources from the public purse. So I'd like to thank uh, Transdev Australasia and um, the iMove CRC, which is a Commonwealth Government initiative, for um, funding my research doctorate. Thank you.